Ending 35. The short diagonals, position 7.3. This position belongs to the third case. The defending king is behind the pawn, similar to the second case, however, a special feature will help us distinguish between the second and third cases. One of the diagonals is very short. How short? Less than four squares long. That is the point. Let us see why, so that we can learn the rule and thus guess the exceptions. Bishop f5 c8. The first stage of the winning plan is driving off the black bishop from the long diagonal. Bishop f3 e4. Bishop c8 b7. Bishop e4 f5. Bishop b7 f3. Bishop f5 c8. Bishop f3 e2. Zooks Wang. Bishop e4 d3. Bishop b7 f3. Bishop d3 a6. Bishop f3 g4. Zooks Wang. There is no good move for the king, and the short diagonal is controlled by white, two squares by the king and one by the bishop. Let us pay attention to this situation once again. The bishop can just take one square away from its counterpart, therefore, the king must take care of two. Now we can draw some important conclusions. Conclusion, when the defending king has taken rear opposition, the ending is drawn if both control diagonals are four or more squares long. The stronger side wins if one diagonal is less than four squares long and he can control them all with the king and the bishop. Of course, this rule only applies when the pawn has to cross the last blockade square. If the pawn is less advanced and there is yet another blockade square, the stronger side succeeds only in crossing the first obstacle. Victory will depend on the success or failure of the new defensive setup on the next blockade square. Following this rule about the length of the diagonals, some theoretical studies present a borderline between drawn and winning positions depending on how advanced the pawn is. These borderlines are not my cup of tea, though I cannot deny they have certain theoretical interest. I think it is better to remember why things happen. Position 7.4, an apparent exception. 3 square diagonal. The attacking king controls just one square. If we apply the previous rules, position 7.4 is quite easy to understand. Where should the white king go? It is logical, where he can control more squares of the short diagonal. King f8 g8. King f6 g6. Bishop h6 f8. Wins in the same fashion as in the previous example. King f6 e6. Adopting rear opposition, an easy and known method, from the beginning. We have plenty of time, so here we could play first, sent g6 or, sent f5. However, at the key moment, 
when the white bishop goes to e7, the black king should always be ready to get to e6. Bishop h6 f8. Bishop h6 f8. Bishop d6 f4. Bishop f8 b4. Bishop f4 h6. Bishop b4 d2. Bishop h6 g7. The bishop has one more square. Bishop d2 e3. Semi Zug's wang. Black has to move the king, but nothing happens. King e6 d6. Bishop e3 d2. King d6 e6. Time to go back. It is interesting to note that other king moves would lose, since they would allow the white king to make it to the other side of the pawn. 6 cent b8 7 cent e7 cent c6, or 7, yen e5 8 cent f8. 8 cent f6 end, with the king on the other side of the pawn, white wins. The winning sequence is easy to analyze and I suggest doing it as an exercise. Bishop d2 c3. Bishop g7 h6. Draw. There is no way to make progress. The white king controls just one square on the short diagonal, so it is impossible to win.